As our solar system began to form, it started off as a rotating cloud of dust, gas, and debris. As this uh, cloud sped up, it began to accrete into different um, forms, and that's kind of how we get our sun and our planets here. This process was estimated to be about 4.5 billion years ago, and how we date this is by rocks that we have dated on Earth, and by dating rocks and crystals that are not from on Earth on our surface. With the formation of the Earth, we now have the differentiation of layers of the Earth. With the uh, heat of the Earth, liquid iron was able to uh, slowly sink because of its density towards the center of the Earth and form its core that we know today. The Earth's energy comes from three main sources. Impact energy, gravitational energy, and the ongoing decay of radioactive isotopes. Impact energy is the energy of motion being converted to heat when asteroids collided with the Earth in its early stages of development. Gravitational energy is when the Earth started to have a greater gravitational pull, which in turn increased as the Earth continued to grow. Gravitational energy was then converted to heat due to how slow the heat loss is in the rocks. This heat that is trapped is still with us today. A subgroup, additional group of energy is tidal, that we also know as tidal friction. This tidal friction it acts also like gravitational energy, except it's the sun, moon, and earth that are pulling on each other. Radioactive isotopes are isotopes that release energy as they decay. They are known to be unstable and must kick out subatomic particles to attain stability. While the isotopes decay, they release heat. Now, on to the structure of the Earth. Layering the Earth by strength, we get more layers. We see at the top we have the atmosphere, which is gaseous, the hydrosphere, which is liquid, the lithosphere, which is a solid crust, the asthenosphere, which is soft and plastic, the mesosphere, which is plastic but also stiffer, the liquid outer core of the solid in the inner core. When it comes to the layering of the Earth, there's different ways we can look at it because the Earth will be separated into layers either based on density or based on its strength. So for example, for the density, it'll start with the crust on the outside, which will be the least dense, go towards the larger section, which is the mantle, which will be more dense, darker rocks, and then eventually go down to the core, which is a solid core, which has the highest density of all the materials. In 1915, Alfred Wegener unveiled his theory of continental drift. His idea wasn't very popular, but found to be a solid theory upon seeing similar species and sediment in areas where continents may have been connected, uh, such as South America and Africa. Post-World War II, seismometers actually meant for nuclear testing picked up on earthquakes and volcanoes, which leads into history. Yes, so plate tectonics work by magma from the asthenosphere coming up between plates and causing the plates to move. Zones of the plate's edges interactions are responsible for most of the earthquakes and volcanoes that happen on Earth. Three types of zones occur at plate edges. Convergent boundaries, where the two plates come together and either build mountains or one subducts beneath the other. Divergent plate boundaries, where the two plates pull apart and new rock forms at their edges, and transform, where the two plates move in parallel to each other.